Hi. When I hear young people talking about conflict and social change, I, I laugh a little under my breath. I, I mean, I try to be polite. I realize that we all think that our generation is special and unique. But I came of age in Brooklyn, New York in the 1960s. A good symbol of the kinds of changes that were occurring back then are folk singers and rock bands. We went from this to something like this. It was a hell of a time. In 1955, my father moved the family from Red Hook, Brooklyn to this house in Marine Park. I was six years old. It felt like we were moving to the country. It's very nostalgic for me to be standing here looking at it. There have been a lot of changes made, but I see the remnants, the vestiges of the house that I moved into so many years ago. Grew up on this street. Back in the day when each house had scores of kids. Having grown up in urban Red Hook on the other side of Brooklyn, moving here to Marine Park felt like another world to, to my brothers and I. There's a golf course now that we used to call the Weeds. And we'd go out as kids. It looked a little something like this. We'd go hunting rabbits with bows and arrows. It was a whole different way of life. But yet here we were within the shadow of Manhattan. This marine park place was a mix of adventures. Across the bay in Breezy Point, we could watch as Cold War missile bunkers would raise and lower their deadly armaments. In developed parts of the park, Marine Park, we could go and watch Jamaican cricket players. I can remember coming here as a young boy, 10 or 11 years old, to watch Jamaicans play cricket. <laughs> Trying to figure out the rules of the game and what they were doing. It's very confusing to a young American boy. That was 60 years ago, and they're still here. Well, not the same guys, but here they are playing cricket. On the Brooklyn side of Jamaica Bay is Floyd Bennett Field, which is now a part of Gateway National Park. And I'm really pleased to see that they left the old control tower standing. When I was a kid, this was an active airport, but going back before I was born, on this very runway, Charles Lindbergh took off for the first ever solo transatlantic flight. Floyd Bennett Field. I'm bicycling down overgrown remnants of the old runway here at Floyd Bennett Field, where 60 years ago, my older brother and I would come down and sneak past the perimeter fence around the airbase. It was an active Air Force Reserve Base. And we would just come down and kind of sit in the weeds at the end of the runway to get a close look at the military aircraft as they took off on their training missions. Old Avengers. Hellcats, World War II era 
fighter planes. There are also multi-engine planes that I guess were some kind of old bomber. I haven't been able to identify them. But yeah, my brother Ed and I would come down here and we'd sneak through the fence, kind of sit in the weeds and watch the planes take off. And one day a pilot spotted us. We were that close. We could see what kind of uh, hats or helmets the pilot would be wearing if they had earphones on. This was a long time ago. It's hard to recall all of the details. But I do remember one day one of the pilots spotting us and we could see him talking into his mic. I guess to alert base security. Shortly afterwards, some kind of motor vehicle, I guess an old Jeep or something like that, came a looking for us. But Air Reserve security was no match for an 11 and a 13 year old boy, delinquents that we were, hiding in the weeds. As a kid, we ne I never came close to this building. It was inside an active military base. That was the air control tower. It's now an administration building or a museum, as my new friend Felix just alerted me to here. Felix is a Brooklyn boy as well. He came from East New York. That's like a whole world away when you're, when you're a young boy. But I just learned I made some mistakes. There's a little information panel here. This was originally a, a passenger airport uh, that was intended uh, to be, you know, for airline passengers and, uh, and mail coming in and out. As I said earlier, Lindbergh took off from here, talking 1931 to 1941. Still noisy aircraft around. But yeah, it dates way back before my time. One of the other errors that I made in the video is that I said this was an air reserve base. That's incorrect. It was a naval air station. And once I read that, I remembered I have an older cousin, Jackie, who's um, an air, a, a, a naval officer, and he used to talk about this place all the time as well. So I think they had a, a contingent of regular Navy flyers here that used to uh, practice in their old World War II aircraft. And... Um, and it was a reserve base as well. I know there was a Marine Reserve base here. There's still a Coast Guard station here, I believe, the Coast Guard Air. I think that's the Coast Guard Air Station over there, that yellowish kind of building. Um, don't know for sure if they're still there, but I think they are. So yeah, it's an interesting place to grow up as a young boy. <laughs> so yeah, baby boomers, that's us. Grew up in Marine Park. My dad was a New York City police officer and a detective and a World War II veteran. He landed at Normandy Beach. So I grew up with the kind of values that a man like that would model for us. Watching TV stories, heroic stories of men in action in World War II and Kelly's heroes. And it was a different era. And, uh, but, but I grew up with those values. The neighborhood was filled with men like my father. And the reason they call us baby boomers is because there's a lot of us. And I grew up with lots and lots of friends and families who grew up around me. One such family was the DC family. And one of the older boys in the DC family, older than me at any rate, impressed the community and me uh, in the mid 60s when he became a US Army officer and became a captain in the Green Berets, the Army Special Forces, and went off to Vietnam. When John came back from Vietnam, his younger brother, Bill, who I knew a little bit better, Bill was my brother Ed's age, a little bit older than me, but I, I, I kind of knew Bill, and um, uh, Bill went off also as a, uh, a Green Beret sergeant. He came back as a staff sergeant after his tour of duty in Vietnam. Well. I'm still in touch with John on Facebook, and I asked John if he could identify some of the planes that I wanted to talk about, and he was able to identify the Avengers and the Hellcats, the, the fighter planes for me. And while I was talking to him, he mentioned Bill. 
I told him I'd be talking about the values that kind of I saw as a young boy growing up here in Marine Park. And I asked John if it would be okay to mention him and his service in the uh, in, in, in Vietnam and, and in the Army and, and beyond that. He actually retired from the Army as a full colonel. But he mentioned his brother Bill. And he said that Bill was uh, featured in a full-length documentary, which I went and found, and I was stunned. I knew Bill. I saw Bill even after the war. He was at a party at my house once. It was a long time ago. And uh, I had no idea of the, the, the dedication and heroism uh, Bill engaged in, him and his buddies in his very elite and secret unit. It's amazing. Out of the corner of his eye, DC saw some action coming at him from his left, from the direction of the kill zone. The last one had escaped the kill team, and he was firing at me, and I fired at him. And next thing I knew, um, my gun wouldn't work. So I'm saying to myself, what's the matter? Why is this thing broken? And I looked down at my car 15, and I saw blood flowing down. I saw blood all over these, these stock, and I, I saw a bullet sticking out of it, out of the side of, of the, the bevel. I said, what is that? And I said, my rifle, mal my first thought was my rifle malfunctioned and something blew out there. But what had really happened was that the enemy bullet was stopped by DC's gun, saving his life. I put a link to that documentary in the description if you can go see it. It's, 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 a, it's an amazing tale. And yeah, I grew up with that guy. So yeah, I love making videos because I have a, an idea in my mind, like here I was gonna tell some anecdotes about the history of this part of Brooklyn. And very often as what happens, and I talk about this a lot, I point my camera at a subject and a subject changes the story. And what this story has become is a story of the kinds of values that were modeled for me as a young boy. When talking about such issues as learning, I'll often tell people who are interested in hearing my opinion that children, young people, anybody for that matter, even adults, we don't learn from what people tell us so much. What we learn is by what people model for us. You know, modeled behavior is really what impacts us, especially as, as young people, as young children and young men. That's who we become. I was not unaffected by the sex, drugs, and rock and roll ethos of the late 60s and the early 70s. It was a fun time, it was exciting, and I was drawn to it a little bit. But ultimately, what was modeled for me by men like my father and his work colleagues and his old army buddies and the older people of my generation like John and Bill what they modeled for me, those were the ethics and the morality that kind of stuck and made me who I am. Having grown up in this, you know, I think rather unique part of the world. In future videos, I'm going to talk about how I moved off to the city and my life became about the city, New York. Manhattan. I don't even know if you could see it on this perspective. Let's see if we could kick it up a little bit. It still might not be able to see it. But it's off there in the distance, the skyscrapers of New York. You can see it right here quite clearly from Floyd Bennett Field. And that's where a number of my upcoming videos will be about. And kind of explain my sense of ownership. You see, I went on to become a firefighter, a fireman, and a lieutenant in the New York City Fire Department where I spent most of my career in Manhattan. And boy, do I have a lot of stories to tell you about that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.